getting the sale is not the most important thing. It's actually connecting with the people because if you live as a transactional person of, hey, I've got to do this to, I've got to meet this person, I've got to solve their problem, meet their need, and I'll get a check at the end. That is kind of how the formula works for most businesses. Go meet somebody, and if there's an opportunity to present yourself as one of Christ's disciples, that's the opportunity that you have to take every time. What's going on? This is Brett Snodgrass with another episode of the Iron Deep Podcast. Got my co-host Michael Stainsbury on the podcast with me today. What's going on, Mike? Uh, you know what? Uh, life is good, and I'm glad to be on this podcast. We're going to talk about some fun stuff today, and uh, yeah, just ready to get started. Amen. Amen. We got some fun stuff for you guys today. Uh, before I really dive into the topic, I just wanted to kind of mention uh, again, if you're new to this podcast, if you're new to Iron Deep, uh, we are equipping and empowering risk-taking male entrepreneurs to really live out their mission, their identity and legacy through Christ. And that's just really what we're all about. Uh, we do that through discipleship, which I'm discipling and and I don't even know if that's the, the right term for me, but just facilitating a group of 12 business guys, business leaders right now. We're also doing an event called the Men's Awakening. That's always the very first place I would recommend you start. That's going to be September 22nd through 25th of this year. Check all that out at irondeep.com. We'd love to chat with you about that. And uh, Michael's been to a couple of events. They're pretty cool, Michael. What, do you, what would you say? Well, you know, one of the things that uh, I'd love to articulate about those events are they are moments in time where you get things flushed out and it's it it reinvigorates whatever you're doing in life. If it's business, if it's relationships that need to be um, uh, mended, uh, it is, uh, or you know, for all intention and purposes, life changing events for men. And uh, I couldn't recommend it enough. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. Thank you for being a host on this uh, particular podcast. Yes. I know you guys have heard Michael for many. He's doing interviews. He's been a part of this podcast for, I don't know, about a year plus, a couple years now. And uh, it's just been awesome to have you, man. And today uh, we're really just doing this series, guys, on stewardship. And we've already done a couple of episodes. I did a couple with Josh Howard, who's a new co-host on this podcast. One about finances, how to steward your finances well. The other one was on how to find or how to steward your time. Uh, what does that look like? And really, when you talk about stewardship, it's talking about just taking care of someone else's possessions or someone else's thing. Like, how do you? Um, how do you steward that or how do you handle that well if it's someone else's? And really, we all know that everything that we have is the Lord's. He has given us literally everything. Like none of it really is ours. He is giving it to us as a blessing. And how, how what are we doing with it? And on the financial podcast, when we talk about stewardship, stewarding finances, I talked about what if I were to give you $10,000 to to handle because you needed it maybe to feed your family to uh put a roof over your head to take care of certain things and then later i said hey what did you do with that ten thousand dollars and you said oh i went and bought a bunch of booze i bought cigarettes i bought a bunch of lottery tickets and how would i feel about that and honestly i wouldn't that wouldn't sit very well with me because you didn't do uh very well with that money you didn't steward it well and that is the same thing with God, he's given us everything. And what are we doing with it? And today we're talking about our business. And uh, you guys, most of you guys are business leaders. You guys are businessmen. And you, God has given you this, this business to stewards. So we're going to talk about just some different principles, some biblical principles, and just different ways that uh, I'm not perfect at this, Michael's not perfect at this, but we are leaning into stewarding our, our businesses. and. I love to start off with the word, uh, start off with scripture. And it says this in Colossians chapter three, verse 23 through 24, it says, whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. And when I was first started, like our really, you know, digging into our real estate business, coming up with our mission, our core values, I would always say that literally this is more of a ministry than a business. It's a, it's like a ministry disguised as 
as a business. And I think that if you can have that heart posture and have that mindset just going into this, I think it is very important that if you're a business leader, a business man or a business owner, that this is like a lot of your ministry. Maybe you're not in the pulpit. Maybe you're not in front of a church, but this literally is on the streets in your communities, uh, a ministry. And I think it has to, it has to start there. And Michael, I want to just kind of kick it off with you. Um, you're out of Tennessee. You own a real estate business. We do some of the same things. Uh, it's been awesome to see. It's been awesome to build that relationship with you, see how you run your business. But when I talk about stewarding your business well, what's some of the first things that maybe you've done, implemented in your own business uh, and, and done that? Well, to steward the business well is to realize again, uh, and again, just to going back to scriptures, because one of the things is if I start filtering it through what I think that should be, then we're going to get we're going to get off track. Uh, and I have done that in my business. This goes really, hey, what do I want this to be? Do I want this to be about me? How much of this is uh, about how I can create this this narrative about myself in the marketplace? Um, and then, uh, you know, but putting the filter on of going to scripture and going, okay, I'm supposed to work and serve people. And that's the, that's the ultimate thing is, um, so whenever we steward our, our business and we think about how, how are, how are our relationships with the people in our business and who we interact with our customers, the people that we talk to all the time, I would say that, um, one of the things that early on in this, in, and just the day-to-day -day operations of it. I started out in acquisitions of just talking to people when we had appointments. And, you know, it is knowing that um, when you're talking to these people, it's going into this, it's like the getting the sale is not the most important thing. It's actually connecting with the people because um, if you live as a transactional person of, hey, I've got to do this to, I've got to meet this person, I've got to solve their problem, meet their need, and I'll get a check at the end. Uh, that is kind of how the formula works for most mm -hmm. businesses. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that 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 we try to do um, is go meet somebody. And if there's an opportunity to um, present yourself as uh, as one of one of Christ's disciples, uh, that's that's the opportunity that you have to take every time you have to you have to go into that th thinking through that. I want to represent my Lord well. And I can't tell you, we, we, we're in a business where there is a lot of strife sometimes with the folks that we're dealing with. And the amount of times um, that I've sat and prayed with people, asked them if I could pray with them um, after hearing their story uh, has been countless. Mm. And those, and, and uh, I don't know, I, I, we don't keep stats on, hey, when you prayed with them, did you get the deal? Right. <laughs> yeah. We don't do that. <laughs> we just do what what we're supposed to do. And that is, is meet, meet that need. Uh, because sometimes there's a lot of emotion, there's a lot of things going on and there's a lot of help that you can give somebody. Like you said, it's a ministry. Um, and it, if you keep that filter on all the time, but this is not about transaction. God takes care of the fruit. He really, he really does. Uh, if you do the work, uh, the way that he wants it done, I'll give you another example. I have a pastor, uh, one of my pastors at church. He began flipping houses. I, I uh, mentored him for a little bit. What he found was, is he goes, you know, what's interesting. Um, you know, I preach at church and I do this at church. He said, but I've had more opportunities to share the gospel to people that do my flips, people that I talk to. Mm. He goes, it's, it's just been, been interesting. Mm. And so what that means for guys like us and guys that are listening, you're out there um, every day talking to people and meeting people, and you're not your your responsibility is to go out and make disciples and disciple the nation, and that's got to be at the forefront uh, for the Christian man, for the Christian entrepreneur. That's how you have to run your things, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Amen. 
Amen. Yeah, and it, obviously, as as followers, as Christian men, we are representing not only our organizations and our businesses, and we want to have a good brand, we want to have good reputation, but we also are representing the kingdom. And uh, you know, obviously, that's that's the most important priority. And uh, and I love what you said that we're. I'm actually flipping a house right now, and it's been kind of an interesting. This is like the first flip that. I've actually worked on the particular house in like 10 years. So it takes a lot for me to, to get my hands dirty, probably get calluses on the hands and swing the hammer. And, uh, it's been, it's been really, really interesting. The only reason why I'm doing that is because my daughter, uh, very much similar to you, Michael, your son's involved in the business. My daughter, she's going to be a senior in high school and she was going to get a summer job. And she's worked some other jobs. She's worked at Subway. She's worked at Crumble Cookie and she's done some babysitting, stuff like that. But I was like, well, uh, maybe we could flip a house together. That would that would be fun. Like I, it's her last summer before her senior year. And I kind of wanted to, to spend some time with her. And you know how they are at, the, at that age. They're driving, you know, their friends are a big priority. And I maybe not see her that much. I said, let's flip a house together. So anyways, he bought this house. So her and her friend and a couple of other young people are doing it. It's kind of really an interesting project. I think we're five or six weeks in and they're just dirty. She's got paint all over her like all the time. And, uh, so we're working on this house, but I'm bringing in some other contractors too. And it's just really interesting situation because I'm also doing some of these lessons, kind of like what we're talking about here, these lunch lessons. So I'll buy lunch and we'll gather in the shade underneath a tree and I'll have the whiteboard out. And I'll just not crazy stuff, just just a couple of fun things uh, that I've learned maybe about entrepreneurship. I brought up Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I've brought up... Um, you know, the habits of success, seven habits of successful people, you know, some of these different lessons I've been talking about and, and maybe sometimes, um, you know, I do talk about the Bible. I do talk about biblical principles, but I always, uh, you know, bring it back to that in these particular lessons. And it always comes back to this, that every business that I think yesterday, this is why I was bringing up that point. I was talking about every business is a people business, every single business is a people business. I said, if you don't have this in your business, then you're probably going to fail. And I was trying to ask him that question. What do you think? What do you think it is? And people, some said profits. Some of us said, um, sales, stuff like that. And I said, well, what, what comes before that? And it's always about people that people are the ones that matter. They're the ones actually going to do all of that. You're not going to have any sales if you don't have any people. So it could be people on your team, your contractors, when you're flipping a house or your customers, your clients, it's always about people. And one of our values really was about, you know, what impression are you leaving on these people? You're representing the company and you're representing, um, the kingdom. What impression do they have of you. And I looked at each one of these young people and I said, I honestly, like, I have an impression of you already. You're on this team. I said, I already have this impression like, with your work ethic. Like, are you going to show up on time? Are you going to do what you say you're going to do? Or do you have integrity? Are you going to lie about you didn't come to work because of, of this? And, and I just started to, to lay out some of these lessons. And I think it just really relates that every business is a people business. The church is a people business. The business is a people business. And we have to come in. And do we really care about people at the end of the day? Do we really love them like Christ does? Do we see them as Christ sees them? Whether, again, it's the contractor or the huge sale person that maybe you could get the big sale or your 17-year-old teen that you're trying to teach them lessons to, every business is, is a people business. I think that just kind of relates to that, Michael. So. Yes. Yeah, it, it does. Um, I have the saying that I try to repeat to my son and to, uh, and his family, like all of Christ for all of life. Mm. So there is no sitting it out. There's no, you know, you can't be at the DMV sitting there impatient. Right. And with a, what are we doing here? Why are we here again? I gotta get a permit for this third kid. <laughs> um, nope. You gotta, you gotta do it. Uh, you know, with, you know, you're sitting in line, those are people there and they're, and everybody's watching you. Um, and so it's, um, so it's a people business and um, you're out there all, 
all day or you know you're what, whatever you do it says in, the, in this word whatever you do to it do it uh, as you're working for the lord and that's everything mm -hmm. that is that is everything and how often do we fail at that mm -hmm. um right uh i'm the worst at mowing my lawn i'm really bad uh, <laughs> you're the neighbor with <laughs> the tall grass <laughs> well here now here's here's a funny story um so my lawn guy said hey listen i need to kill all the weeds in your front yard in order to get this thing really rocking. So he did that. And then uh, I'm not going to say a family member came by and they just came in and I know like everything was dead. Right. And everything <laughs> looked terrible, but I'm in my mind. I'm like, man, I'm glad to see this person. First thing they say is golly, your yard looks terrible. <laughs> and I was like, oh no. And uh, you yeah. Did, did you, did you respond with it gets worse before it gets better? Yes. Yeah. I should have. I had, <laughs> I had no, my, my response was I just went to work, you know, like I was like, I'm not, I can't have this, this, <laughs> look this bad. And, uh, and then I gotta, I said, I gotta go hire some kids to help me. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's so, crazy. But that's, yeah, that's, that's it. So, um, you know, we're not going to be excellent all the time, but he does require that our effort be as excellent as it, as it can be in, in all things. And, uh, and when we don't, we need to repent of it and, and, uh, and do better. Mm. Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, it just get, get, again, goes back to, uh, just, uh, the biblical principles of, of, of integrity, right. And loving people. Let's move on to kind of, um, stewarding, like just your resources in your business. So obviously stewarding, uh, the Lord has given us these businesses, these blessings, and we have, we have people in them and we're loving the people. He's also given us just th these resources in our business. And I, uh, this is funny that I even uh, bring this up because I actually taught during the lunch lesson for, for these teens yesterday, I taught this particular lesson from Luke 16, 10. And it says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. And this was a lesson that I kind of taught them. And I, I love working on this house because again, I haven't worked on a house in like 10 years, but it takes me back to 10 years ago when I was working on houses, when I was really getting dirty, when I was scooping up feces and gross stuff in the house and picking up needles and just all this crazy stuff and, and, um, working my tail off to, to fix up this particular house and scrubbing the toilets and cleaning and just doing all the work that I would probably never, you know, tell you to do again, Michael. Cause I said, Hey, we need to delegate some of that stuff out. It's not the best use of my time, but trust trusted with little, like, you know, going back to my daughter, my 17 year old daughter, you know, coming from, from that season and that age group she's she's made in passing sometimes dad i just want to take over your business so she just made that comment i'm like okay and my comment is i have to trust you with little before we can trust you with a lot so if i ask you to scrub this toilet and you're not willing to do that then i can't trust you with more uh than that and i think that just goes back to are you doing the little things are you doing what, what's got, what are you doing with the little blessings? Like we all want to be bigger. We all want to hard charge it and, and grow and have this big thing, big business. Um, you know, we've seen the things we've seen the videos, we've seen YouTube and, and sometimes that looks very, very attractive and like, Oh, I just want, I want the big thing. I, I want right. this big influence or this big impact or this big money or whatever it is. But, are you being trusted with the small things like the small dollars? Like maybe you're just getting started right now. And can you be trusted with that lender gives you $10,000, which I have done. And can you be trusted with that before you get to a hundred thousand before you get to a million? Right. Maybe you got one employee. Can you be trusted to lead that one employee before you get to 10? Like right. steward the small things before you can get to the big things. Um, so talk about the, you, Michael, any, any small things that, you know, you're teaching that you're, you know, working your own business. I think we can get to a season two where like, we're like, oh, I'm too, 
I'm too big for that stuff. I don't do the small things anymore. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm reminded of a story of a gentleman that owns a carpet cleaning business in California. He owned like 30 different franchises, but every two weeks he would for three days uh, go and do the work. Mm. Uh, he would do the work in a different franchise that he owned um, because he was setting the temperature of, you know, for his employees. And, um, you know, this is a, an $8 million a year business that, you know, he, he could run as, you know, a CEO and, you know, through an office and never have to touch a carpet. Um, so he, it, you know, so he kept doing the little things and that turned into what it is, you know, in our business, and I'm sure that you may have had a similar situation as, you know, when you're first starting out and, in business, you had to maybe borrow capital from somebody, somebody, um, somebody that maybe a family member, maybe a friend, mm -hmm. and everything's on the line there. Uh, when when you do that, that is the trusted. Uh, t that is the time when it it marks um, the time. Are you going to be able to follow through and and pay this person back at the terms that you have said? There have been times in my business, uh, and, and even recently, where uh, that I've done a deal and it was a bad deal. And I had to pull money out of my pocket to pay a lender. Mm -hmm. And there, there, there is that, um, there is that little squirrel in your mind that says, you know what, you can always tell them, Hey, this was a bad deal. And why don't we share the losses on this? Mm -hmm. why don't, can you help me out here? No. Um, when you are, um, the, the Bible has very clear standards about lending. It doesn't ever say you don't, don't borrow. It says, Hey, you're slave mm -hmm. to the lender. What that means is that according to the terms of your agreement, you need to own it and you need to come through. And that's, that's where the test comes in. There's always tests. It's never a smooth ride from start to finish. Mm -hmm. It is, Hey, I, I did a bad deal. Oh, uh, you know, it, my options are, you know what, I'm going to share the losses. Mm -hmm. And then what happens to my to my testimony, to my faith, when somebody else out there in the marketplace, when you borrow from somebody else and they say, Hey, didn't you borrow from Michael Stansbury? Did he do what he said he was going to do? No, actually he didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he did a bad deal and he asked me to share the losses. I did cause I wanted to get my money back. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that is, you know, that sets the tone and that, that hurts. Mm -hmm. yeah. That hurt, hurts your ability to grow. <laughs> yeah. Right. When you, when you do that, so you got to own uh, the the things that you do, and you've got to pay back the lenders at the at the price that you at, that they asked, um, and and God honors that, mm -hmm. and God honors uh, and for the person that does it, God honors somebody that's repentant. But what did Zacchaeus do uh, when he came down from the tree and and God and he said, "I want to follow you," and and he says, "I'm going to pay back all the people that I've." I've run over yeah, four three, times. three, three, four times even. Mm -hmm. And so that's got to be the heart of a Christian. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's hard. Yeah. And that's hard, but it is, that's the hard work you have to do in order to be trusted with more. Yeah, no, definitely. And it brings up a couple of things just in my own life and not to, again, to toot, but I think it's just a, just a great example is, uh, I got referred to someone that uh, had lent us some money and his first investment, I think with us was, you know, about $50,000, which, you know, with, with real estate, especially in this season that we're in, doesn't go super far to, to buy a home right. Uh, in these days, maybe back in the day you could buy a home for, for that, or a couple homes here in Indy, but not, not too far anymore, but, um, but that was, you know, four or five years ago. And that was just great. Started to build that relationship with them. And then, but later on, you know, that little investment and, uh, started to build trust and it paid it back, paid it back. And we did, you know, multiple deals and that's grown to more of a significant number. And again, trust with a little could trust with a lot. And I want to ask you guys, maybe you have lenders in your particular business. Maybe there's only a lender that has $10,000 with you. And there's another lender that has $500,000, whatever. Are you being trusted with the little, just the same as, as the lot? I've been on the other end of that and I've lent out my money. I actually the same amount, $50,000. I lent a friend of mine uh, and I still haven't been paid back. And I've lost just some of that trust with that individual where he could have gotten more 
and trusted with more, but we've lost that. So again, little and uh, are you trusted with a little and a lot? Are you honest with a little? Like, are you saying fibs to your team? Um, again, my daughter, I've heard her say this, like, I want to skip this practice or I want to skip this work and I want to say this. <laughs> which is not the told, which is not the full truth, right? And uh, just trying to teach those if you can't be trusted with a little missing, you know, a little bit of practice or work, can you be trusted with a lot? And I think just what does that look like for your own lives uh, and as business leaders? Let's go to uh, the next, just leadership and team development. Um, I've had seasons of where I've been really good at this. Um, where, you know, I'm, I'm really uh, intentional that the Lord has given us people in our business. Has he blessed you with people that are sacrificing their time and their lives for, uh, to really, you know, be a part of your business, to be a part of your team. And he's blessed us with people, individuals that have come in and it is our role to, to help be a leader to them, to help develop them, to help, um, you know, dig more into their skill set to to celebrate them and what does that particularly look like there was a season and i'm still navigating this even to this day as i would love to do it more consistently is you know meeting with my team members one-on-one -on -one, talking about their goals talking about their dreams what do they want uh, and can i be a part of helping them achieve those things um I would, I have a gentleman on a team that he wanted to own a house. He, he never owned a home before. And that was his dream to own his own home. His family is always rented. He, his, they've never owned a home and he was finally able to own his own home through the resources that we are just, just watching that and, and developing that. Some people want to own rental properties. We've been able to get them a couple of rental properties, get them going on their own wealth building vehicles. And uh, so that's just one thing that, that, that we've done. I've always, and try to, to think about how do I continuously develop my team? Um, but what about you, Michael, when it comes to team development, leadership, what are some ways that, uh, you know, you've been able to steward that well? One of the things is one of the things we find out as, as we're, as our entrepreneurs is some of the people that we bring on are entrepreneur like and some aren't. And then one of the things of gauging how to, uh, manage this person is when they ask the question, why why are we doing this it's um we sometimes that's a great that's the best question to ask um and sometimes the other guy will never ask why they just do the thing mm -hmm. they just do the thing okay he says do the thing we'll do the thing the person that asks why um you know i will develop mm. i will i you know I'll, I'll talk to you i always give opportunities for them to ask ask why in the development the person that does the thing i'm going to encourage them to do the thing as best as they can um, and, you know, and also just drop things every now and then on them to get them to be curious. Uh, and so one of the things I think is it's, it's leadership and team development to me is, is right there in front of your face. You know, the people that at, at different times, they're going to step up and want to know why you're doing such a thing mm -hmm. or, and how you're doing that. And so, um, that's kind of the, the way that, that, that I approach development um, on, you know, on each team. But one of the things that, that we, we do intentionally, uh, for leadership and team development, um, is to encourage. And what happens is if I'm encouraging, if I see something that is done, um, at work and I don't encourage it, well, or I don't, um, maybe praise it. So you don't you 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 don't want to be a, that that boss that just praises everything. And, oh, you're doing such a great mm -hmm. and every day, every day, every day. You don't do that. But for something that's excellent, you know, uh, that needs to to be praised. Mm -hmm. That can't be ignored. Um, and so often we get into this routine where the some big things happen and it goes goes unnoticed. You know, I'll never forget the story of uh, of Esther. Uh, Mordecai, right? He does this thing where he he uh, saves the the king, and uh, he doesn't get recognized for it until like years later when the king has a dream and he remembers it. 
Um, and it was, it was advantageous in that it was like, that was, that was God's providence. But it's, it's interesting to me that when uh, something like that happened, it wasn't praised right away. And that was praised later. Mm. But uh, I think for me, when I saw that, I was like, oh, okay. Uh, there's another lesson here. There's a little nugget in there is when you see something like that happen, uh, don't, don't ignore it. That's a, that's a huge, that's a huge thing in the life of your children, in the life of your business. Um, you know, when you see somebody else and one of your friends on Facebook, instead of envying them, like, Oh, I wish I would, I wish that have been me. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, it's just celebrating, celebrating. Yeah. Um, so that's gotta be part possible. And that, that is also because envy in our business is like, it's the bitterness. It's uh, heightened. Pill. Yeah. Heightened. And we all do it, um, to an extent, but there's a, there's an antithesis of it. It is mm-hmm. the, to encourage and to be happy for that genuinely happy, um, not fake happy, uh, for somebody that's just, just d- done something really, really well. Mm. Um, um, and that's the mark of again somebody moving uh, up and being being faithful to their to their witness. Mm-hmm. Yes, no, definitely. And I love that. I love that praise, that encouragement. Something that uh, we even put on our bracelets, uh, you know, at Iron Deep is just you know celebrate. We celebrate each other. We encourage each other. I think that's just at the forefront. And uh, I would also like if you're not the owner of the business and you're tuning in, and this is something that I that I think that is really, really important. So I got invited to, uh, to an organization called dad camp and to teach anyways, the owner of dad camp, the director of dad camp, he's started and it's a really cool organization, but I was on a call with him, um, the other day and there's some other guys on there, but after the call, I just kind of encouraged him after the call, praise him. Just you're such a making, making such an impact on people's lives. And, um, and, I think that's really important because I want to just encourage you that don't only encourage people that like on your team, that's like, that's serving under you or whatever, but I would also encourage you to, to encourage and to praise. Maybe it's your boss. Maybe it's your, your leader, the guy above you, because that person hardly ever gets praised. <laughs> right. Um, that, that's absolutely correct. I have a, a friend of mine who owns a, a plumbing business and it's very successful. Um, I mean, very, very successful. And every now and then I'll send him a message on Facebook uh, and we'll text back and forth. And I'll, and I'll, and again, um, I'll just encourage him and say, Hey man, I'm really, really proud of you. And he texts back, he texts back up couple paragraphs like how that is such a he goes i i needed that in the biggest way Mm. he goes because i'm having all these you know you you see that what's what what the other part but here's here's the parts that we're struggling with but i really appreciate that and then as you find out more information about if i I, you know i've got a better relationship with i found out that there was just a whole lot of his past where he didn't have a a a good dad influence he didn't Mm. have this and that And um, a good dad encourages his son. Mm. And when you have somebody that comes out of a uh, out of a life where they never had that, it is it is a life spring. Mm. And we need to be light to that. We need to recognize that Um, if we're lucky, you have a great dad, mom. Mm. I had I had a great dad, mom. I have a great father in law. But that's not. In our culture, you norm. can look and see it's not it's not the norm. Yeah, it's not the norm. You go to any we talk about our kids all the time, and the, and we we have kids that we go to church with, that we we kind of help lead. And our family is not normal. Mm. It's usually you know some sort of broken home. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you just being mindful of that, and then knowing how to, you know how to how to give somebody a cup of water that they mm-hmm. desperately need, and that's what that's what a lot of men need. Amen. Amen. As we wrap up this show, let's talk about just one other element of just stewarding a business. So we've talked about really just kind of building a business with integrity, with biblical principles um, that really just, uh, you know, shines the light of Christ and, and loving on people. We've talked about that. We've talked about stewarding the resources in your business that the Lord has given us. Uh, we've talked about team development and leadership. And the last thing I want to talk about really is just impacting the communities. And this is something I think that is, 
I don't even know if I thought about this much, honestly, uh, through the earlier years of my business, and I think it's becoming more and more is impacting the community. Like I'm in Indianapolis right now. And, you know, are we making an impact here in our community? Are we making things better? Are we developing the communities? Are we making houses better? Are we making it a nicer place to live and, and helping the streets and just beyond that? Are we helping out with some of the charities in, within the communities? Are, um, you know, I own some rental properties and there's a, um, there's an organization nonprofit here that helps put homeless people into some rental properties. That's just an organization, right? Are we, are we helping out with our communities and are we impacting them in a major way? And I think this is, this has become just more important and a priority in our business than it has been uh, in the past. In Matthew 5, 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. So again, we're representing our organizations, but we're also representing the kingdom, but we're also representing just our communities. Like what do the, what do the communities think about you? Like, are you there to make it better and, and, and really to help pour into those communities? Or are you there to make a quick buck and, um, you know, kind of be a slum Lord and, and, and not to do any of that stuff. And, uh, I don't know. So like any thoughts on that, Mike, uh, just about your communities. I know you've done some cool stuff with your communities and I think you're, you guys just bought a car wash too, which in a, in a small community, which is kind of cool. So talk to us about that with you guys. Yeah. So one of the things that, that we did, and, and so in, in our business, it's, it's really easy to go one-on-one -on -one with people and, um, in the real estate business. And now we, we own, um, a car wash and a little self storage facility. And we actually started, um, uh, there's, a, it's in a, in a little town in Arkansas and we, we got on their Facebook page and, and we, you know, six months ago bought the facility in the last, uh, month, uh, we partnered with, a, a, a an art group with, that has 12 to 17 year old kids that painted a mural for us. So we paid for their camp so they could do the mural for us. And it was an incredible thing to um, do for the community. Everybody loves it. Everybody thinks it's a, a great picture, but here's, here's the cool thing that it did. Um, Cause in, in the other business, we, we don't have as much opportunity to do this, but in this business, because we're right in the middle of town, everybody sees us. Uh, it was an opportunity for you, us to meet these 12 and 17 year old kids. And again, this is another town that we don't live in. Um, we got an opportunity to talk to them for 30, 45 minutes before they started. And we got to share, you know, what, uh, what means most to us, which is the gospel. And this was a kind of a, a, a secular little organization. And they, they let us talk about Jesus mm. and it was an opportunity to kind of share. Um, and it was, it was great. And the kids had a lot of questions about entrepreneurship, about how the car wash worked. They had some great questions, but, um, and it, again, seeds planted. And this is about, you know, impacting the community through businesses. Are you, are you out there? Are you planting seeds? Um, are you doing it? What's the motivation to, to do this? Um, obviously when we're talking about business and doing things with the community, there is this, uh, there, there is this little dichotomy here. Why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Am I doing this because it's good marketing? And it's good uh, to get my face out there. Yes, it is. It's, it's obviously that. Mm -hmm. But what is the what is the main driver for that? At the end of the day, um, are you are you looking at okay? Are you looking at your your balance statement, your your P and L at you know afterward and going all right? Was this worth it? Okay. Mm. So is that is that the question? Mm. Um, I think if you leave it at we impacted the community, this was awesome and things will work out. Uh, but if you start metric it, then we know why we did it. We, we know why we did it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I think that's, uh, but I think you, you do do those things. And I've seen um, great organizations do things in the community. Um, and I've known great organizations do things in the community and they do them anonymously. And I just find out, I know who that person is. Mm. And uh, just because it just smells like them, but no one else would, no mm -hmm. one else knows. And that's the kind of stuff too, that we need to think about doing is like, we need to do both. We need to do the, the anonymous stuff. Uh, when we, our heart is pulled in that direction. Mm -hmm. And then we need to do the stuff that's in the community that says, Hey, here, here we are. This is what we kind of stand for. And we love the community. We want to help the community.
Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's how you can that's how I think you can do it, uh, impacting the community through your through your business. Yeah, no, I love that. Uh, been part of an organization. One of my friends um, out in Utah kind of gave me this idea, but we kind of stole it. We call them simple. Our business is called Simple Quarters. We call them simple impact moments. So one of the things that we started to do was every quarter we would have some sort of simple impact moment where the team gets involved. So I kind of have them choose someone on the team, volunteers to choose this simple impact moment. And sometimes we have people all over the uh, all over the world we have some in the philippines we have some different countries but obviously a lot of us are in indianapolis and we pick something just to impact uh what does that look like and the team gets involved but it's a lot of fun uh sometimes it's just it's different organizations helping kids uh foster care stuff like that so but it's it's just a lot of fun so that's just an idea too so what is your guys idea on the impact uh the communities in your organizations um so that's awesome man so that's kind of a wrap. This is just an episode really about stewarding well. Everything that we have literally is God's. He has given us literally everything that we have. And the question is, what are we doing with it? Are we uh, doing well or are we just kind of wasting some of our resources? And he's, if he's given you guys a business and bless you with the business, sometimes there's going to be challenging days and you're like, this is tough. This is hard owning a business and it's uphill both ways and that's okay. But just to still be grateful for those days, still be grateful for the freedom that you have, that he gave you the business. He gave you the employees, the team that you're working with and just to not take that for granted. So that's a wrap with the iron deep podcast. Remember to check out iron Check out the retreat coming up in September. We'll see you guys next time.